Hello, everybody. Welcome to Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Steve Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. I'll tell you what, it is just crazy out there on the news desk. Let's take a look at our top stories for the day. Top foreign policy takeaways from the vice presidential debate. You wouldn't believe what other people were thinking around the world. Exxon Mobil accelerates African energy investments and foreign frontier exploration. Chevron restarts gas production in Israel after a brief halt during Iran's attack. Oil moves higher despite rising U.S. crude inventories. And Iran claims missile attack complete, but Israel vows revenge. Whew. I mean, you cannot make all of this kind of stuff up. Last night, I want to know if you saw the debate and if you enjoyed a Marine beating up on three women was absolutely not on your bingo card. It was not on my bingo card. This first article was pretty funny. Top foreign policy takeaways from the vice president debate. Miss producer, if you could bring this picture up, this picture actually su just summarizes the whole thing. You have vice president candidate J.D. Vance looking sideways going, really? And then you have a deer in the headlights. I think he's trying to decide how he's going to finish this lie out walls. So you got to love this look on this, but here there are four main points in this article, and I thought really enjoyed it. First one coming up around the corner, Iran and the Middle East crisis. Vance answered directly saying it was up to Israel what they think they need to do to keep their country safe and that the United States should support its allies whenever they are fighting the bad guys. And then you have also Waltz did not answer the question directly. Instead, he reiterated Washington's vital role in defending Israel. So kind of a mixed bag of events there. China, when China comes along here, Walsh also supported the administration's approach to climate change, the Inflation Reduction Act, which gives tax credits and subsidies for clean energy manufacturing and supporting of China. So China likes this because it gives more money to China. Waltz took the opportunity to defend his travel to China as an eye-opening and informative experience. I learned a lot about China. The debate on immigration and border security entered a Trump-Vance pledge to carry out the largest mass deport, uh, deportation in U.S. history. Vance to double down on that promise, vowing to begin it by deporting undocumented immigrants who have committed criminal backgrounds. Hats off to Vice President nominee or candidate, excuse me, J.D. Vance, Senator Vance. I applaud you in the way that you held yourself in this debate. And absolutely, I, I saw so many people that were saying, I'm not sure about J.D., I think there are a lot of people that are very pleased with your performance. So, Senator Vance, congratulations and well done. Mr. Governor Waltz, I got nothing for you. Let's go to ExxonMobil Accelerates African Energy Investments and Frontier Exploration. I found this article in the Southern African region. ExxonMobil has emerged as the exploration leader with the Nambi Basin offshore Angola, where an ankle wildcat well has been spud and results are really, uh, they're looking forward to it. In Nigeria, ExxonMobil is poised to shift its focus to deep water investments, and it's also in other areas of Africa, is pleased to be a platinum sponsor for AOW as they commemorate 30 years of convening in the energy industry in fruitful engagements and sharing of best practice at Robert Bark. ExxonMobil VP, South Atlantic Exploration. Hats off to them. And I can't blame ExxonMobil for, quite honestly, really expanding out into Africa. If you can get away from the regulatory issues with the United States drilling, 
go for it. And again, give good returns to your shareholders. Moving on to the next article here, Chevron restarts gas production in Israel as brief halt during Iran's attack. This is in the Leviathan field. Chevron has reserved, uh, resumed natural gas production supply on two platforms offshore Israel were briefly suspended due to Iranian missile attack. And Chevron Mediterranean Limited can confirm we've resumed production at both of our Tamar and Leviathan facilities and now supplying natural gas to our customers in Israel and the region from both from both reservoirs. It's pretty cool. I don't know about you, but I also saw on X a a bomb, a a huge bomb that was intercepted by the Iron Dome, I believe, and it fell on a man as he was walking. I, I bet he did not have being hit by a falling bomb, not a rocket coming in, but a rocket that had been intercepted and just flattened him. But he didn't have that on his bingo card. Let's go to oil moves higher despite cr- rising U.S. crude inventories. Gasoline stocks added 1.1 million barrels in the reporting year with a production average of 9.6 million. This compared with a draw of 1.5 million barrels from the previous week. In the middle distillates, the authority estimated that the inventory declined of 1.3 million barrels for the final week of September compared to the stock draw of 2.2 million barrels for the previous week. The administration reported an estimated inventory build of 3.9 million barrels for the week of September 27th, uh, driven by the latest escalation in the Middle East, compared uh, compared to the previous draw of 4.5 million barrels for the previous week. So we were currently seeing prices around the $70 for WTI. I still think we're in a holding pattern, and that's going to be because of this article here. Iran claims missile attacks complete, but Israel vows revenge. The massive attack, Iran, Iranian Foreign Minister, I apologize if I butcher your name, Abbas Abarjaki, said in a message that on X that attack targeted solely military and securely security sites involved with what he said the Israeli genocide in Gaza and Lebanon and was conducted by Iran in self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter. And when you want to take a look at the I, the Israeli response, Israeli response, they said, we are still going to respond. If they take out their fi- the fields that are in the main area of Iran. Iran is doing about three and a half million barrels per day. One and a half million barrels per day is being sent to China. And so when you take a look at whether or not they take out that one particular choke point, which I'm getting to here, that choke point is right around the island where the uh, Iranian oil export infrastructure is around. And so if they take that one island out and they take out the 3.5 million barrels per day, let's say they take out 3 million barrels per day of export capabilities, that's a lot off of the market. That's also a lot that China won't be able to buy. So with that, my my heart and our prayers go out for all the folks that have been hit by uh, Hurricane Helene. And we are just so sorry that this is going on. And please take note of Elon Musk and Starlink and the great thing that they are doing. I have bought mine. I have my, this is my portable Starlink to take with me on the road so I can do my podcast. And it is something, I have another one here for my compound. And so the family, we can share, get together with your neighbors, order a Starlink now because there are, this is only October 3rd. And we have a lot of October surprises that are still going to happen. So please be prepared. Make sure you got water. You can defend your homes. Make sure that you can communicate. I have my radios ready to go. I have everything else. So make sure that you can survive with food. Have a bug out bag in case you you get compromised in your home. But above all, men, be ready to defend your homes 
your family, your friends, and help your neighbors. The government will not be there for you. So you have to be prepared to defend yourself and help others. So with that, take care and absolutely have a wonderful day. Talk to you all soon.